Hi, I'm Shay Finney, a fifth grade teacher at Phoenix, and students today are conducting an experiment all about sound. As I drop different objects on the table, they will discern which object they predict might um, have made that sound. They'll be able to decide that different objects create different sounds, and that sound is created through vibrations. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Our next unit is going to be about sound. How important do you think sound is? How important? Like on a scale of like one to ten, yeah, one like never going to use sound ever in the history of the universe to ten being like, I don't know how we'd function without it. I got some tens, some fives, some fours, some eights, some nines, some tens. All right, Joey, pick someone to tell us why they think sound is or isn't important. Okay, so I hear what you're saying about communication. Sound gives us information, right? You said if you hear something fall, you might protect yourself, right? You might have a reaction. Or if someone's telling you to do something, you can take that information. Or if you're my son Benjamin, you might just move on with your life. It doesn't matter what mommy said, right? Um, or you might use, uh, or animals. Animals use sound, right? Sound does give us information. Yes. Yes, you can hear someone if they're coming up behind you. You can hear them. Um, if they're making noise, uh, you can definitely be prepared and have a reaction like that. So does anyone know, how do we know the difference between, oh, that was a sound of something falling or someone's telling me what to do? How do we know the difference? I forgot I'm not in charge. Oh, wait, let's pick uh, Zayn. Can you be in charge? Thank you. But how do we know the difference? Like, how do you know, oh, it was a crash that fell to the ground, not my mom telling me to go buy her pajamas from Target, but my mom told me to. It'll be a loud crash? Ah, uh, my mom's pretty loud. And where she gets that from? But how, why is it different? So an object and a person are going to sound different. Why? Because someone help us. Different volume. So what does volume have to do with it? What is volume? So she said volume has to do with how loud it is. Okay. So if I drop a paper clip or if I drop something off the wall, or if my mom is talking, they're not going to sound the same, or I'm going to be able to tell them apart because different objects, different materials, create different sounds. There we go. So our activity for the first thing that we're going to do is our drop challenge. All right. It says, if we close our eyes and listen, I'm sure we can hear lots of things. I could hear the vent of the air filter making sound. Uh, you could probably hear people closing doors and walking down the hallway. There's lots of things you can hear. And we can use words to describe those sounds. So we want to be able to answer the question, um, what are the properties of sounds that make them identifiable? Meaning, how can we identify different sounds? So our first activity is going to be this drop chamber. What I want us to do is I'm going to drop some mystery items behind this barrier, and you're going to be able to use your what? To your hearing. So you're not going to be able to see. You're going to be able to use your ears in order to say what you think the sound is going to be. All right, so let's pull up the sheet again. And we should be able to make some conclusions about how sound travels as well. Okay, I'm going to drop five, one, two, three, four, five, mystery items. When you hear the item, I'm going to drop it a second time, put the scissors away. And after I drop it a second time, I want you to write down what you think it is. Should what you think it is go here under prediction or here under actual? Yeah, you're going to put it underneath prediction. That's what you think it might be. 
And then I'll tell you what it really was. Everybody ready? Anybody have any questions about what you're supposed to do? No. No peeking, Jack. Okay. What kind of things should you be doing in the background? Listening. Listening. Is this a good time to clean out your desk? No. Okay. Are you ready? Object number one. Nope. Nope. Write it down. Under prediction. Nope. Write it down. Under prediction. I'm going to drop it one more time. All right. Ready? Here's object number two. And a second time. Object number two. Should we predict like a puppy? Is there a puppy back here? No. So it's got to be reasonable. If you're not 100% sure, put down your best guess and then move on. Ready for three. Number three. And here's number three one more time. I love how most of us are writing down a prediction, what we think it could be, whether we're right, whether we're wrong, it's okay. Write down a prediction. You don't have to hide your snack. It's okay that you're eating snack. Thumbs for four. Here's number four. And one more time. Object number four has been dropped twice. And number five. And one more time. Thumbs if you have all five predictions. All five predictions. You're ready to go. Yes. Okay, Zan, pick someone to tell us, what did you think object number one was? If you're right, cool. If you're wrong, cool. It's just a prediction. You're okay. Yes. Yes. And Zan, pick someone. Oh, I'm sorry. Confirming. Object number one was a plastic spoon. Plastic spoon. All right. And, Zan, pick someone to tell us, who did you think object number two was? Play with a C. A paper clip. A plastic chip. Like a Domino's chip or a checker's chip, something like that. Plastic chip. I see a lot of people writing down what it actually was. That's good. And Zayn, pick someone to tell us, what did you think object number three was? Every year, someone says it's a pencil. It is a wooden clothespin. So pause. Why do you think he thought a pencil Nope, it's a pen. Ah, it's over there. Why do you think he thought a pencil sounded like this wooden clothes pen? Anybody? Say it. Because it's wooden? So do you think objects made of wood are going to sound similar? I mean, think about even the shape, right? Isn't the shape kind of similar? Okay, maybe. Object number four. 
Sure. Plastic cup. Yes. Like one of those cups at the dentist, those little cups. Plastic cup. So it sounds like we're pretty good at the plastic ones, right? We knew the plastic spoon. We knew the plastic cup. wonder if we'll get the last one right. A coin. This is a metal washer. A metal washer. So why do you think Santiana thought it was a coin? I mean, it sounds like most, who else thought it was a coin? Almost everybody. So why do you think we all thought it was a coin? So it had that kind of flat, and then it was round. You could kind of hear it like turning and turning, that ring, 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 right? That sound that coins make, yeah. Um, it's flat, it's circular, it's made of metal. Do you think most metal objects have a similar sound? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Okay. So were we able to discriminate, tell apart, do some sound discrimination, these objects? Were we able to tell them apart? Yeah. Why? Why are we able to do this? Najee, is this still yours? Yeah, can we pass this to Najee, please? How are we able to do this? We could hear different materials. Yeah, I mean, all the materials I dropped are something that's relatively familiar. What was two? So we were able to tell the different objects apart because they're made of different materials, right? So how do you think sound is able to move or travel? Like, Logan, could you hear what I dropped? Yeah, and then Dante, could you hear it? Yeah, and then Taylor, could you hear it? So how do you think sound must move and travel? Bounces off of other objects. Well, sound does travel as a wave, so you're off to a good start. But if the sound I made back here, it went to Logan, and it went to Dante, and it went to Taylor, it must travel how? All around. Sound's going to travel in all directions. So we can answer that question, how does sound travel? In all directions. As a wave. You can even be more specific and say it travels as a wave in all directions. So what do you think sound is? Like is it like a, a person, place, or thing? What do we think? Oh, Zayn wants to tell us. It is a type of energy. So we can put that sound is a form of energy. And it travels in the form of, we know it's called sound waves, but there's another name for that, which is um, compression waves. We're going to add in another name, um, because they'll say both on the SOL. So we're going to put both in our notes. So we can say sound is a form of energy. And it travels in compression waves. It travels in longitudinal waves. Thank you, Kinshaw. Yeah. 
And what causes it to, to travel in the first place, or what causes sound? Anybody know? Not sure? Okay. This is a tuning fork. It has two tines at the top. Does everybody see that? And if I strike it, we're going to be able to hear a sound. Now, I want you to hold out your hand. If I touched your hand to the tuning fork, what did you feel? Vibration. Vibration. But hold on a second. If I strike it and touch it, do you hear it anymore? No. no. If I strike it, it'll just keep making that sound. If you look at it, oh, sorry, here. What do you see? It's vibrating. Yeah. So that's actually what's causing sound in the first place. So our second activity, you're going to go around and test out some different objects causing vibrations. What does vibrations mean? Please leave them alone. Class, please leave it alone. What are vibrations? Yes, you. Sure. Yep, vibrations just means it's moving back and forth. It's shaking. That's vibrations. So those would be good things to know as far as our vocabulary goes. So make sure you have written down, sound is a form of energy. It's produced, that means created, and transmitted, that means it's sent by vibrating matter. Matter are solids, liquid, gases, stuff like that. Um, and it goes in compression waves or longitudinal waves. So let's take a look at the right side of our notes before we finish up our last section of labs. You should be done eating. It's been about 40 minutes. And let's talk about sound waves. You're going to have an activity to do for a grade on sound waves tomorrow. So it says, what are the parts of a sound wave? I know that there's a picture here that looks a little Confusing, but this is what a sound wave looks like. Let's have um, Jackson and Najee come on up. What is this? It's a slinky. There's actually been a couple questions on the SOL that says, What toy does sound look like? And it looks like a slinky. Can you hold one in? Yep, just go stand over there. Oh, but just hold it up high. There we go. And can you hold this side? Just, you got to hold all of it because it'll hit the floor. It'll hit the floor. OK, let's try this. Can you hold this? OK, hold it up a little higher. This is a compression wave. When you think of compress, press, pressure, it's actually going to get closer together and further apart. Hold it up. And this is what sound actually does. Let's see if you can see it. Did you see? Let's try one more time. Hold on, hold on. So I'm hearing people say it traveled through. So this part that I touched, did it move all the way down there and it moved all the way back? No. What did happen? What did happen? Ashlyn. There you go. This part touched this one, and it bumped into this one, and it bumped into this one, and it bumped into this one. So this part didn't actually move all the way across. I could do it this way, too. What you're seeing is just one piece bump into the next one. That's what's happening. Your molecules, your particles are bumping into each other. Thank you, wonderful assistants. Can play with that later. 
So let's label these parts before we take a quick break. It says, what are the parts of a sound wave? Do you see where we said it gets squeezed closer together? When it gets squeezed closer together, it's going to sound different. Remember how we use different objects to make different sounds? Different sound waves, if they're squeezed together or if they're farther apart, are going to sound different as well. Anybody have a guess? What do you think it's called when it's squeezed together in this compression wave? Zayn? It's called a compression. Nice job. So we're going to label this as a compression. That's when they're squeezed together. When it's super close together, it's going to be moving really, really fast. So a compression wave, when it's compressed, it's going to sound, the pitch is going to change. But we're going to do that in just a moment with this guy. I'll show you what's happening. Okay. So then what's it called when it's spread out? This is not a familiar word. This word is rare faction. Not fraction, faction. So a rare faction is when it's spread apart. Spread out is the rare faction. So then the last part is asking, what are the other parts of the wave? And unfortunately, my wave is just not easy to see. So if you need to, just trace it back again. Right? So for each of these parts, even though it's going in a circle, it's got high parts, low parts, it's got all those things going on. All right, let's do number one first. Number one is from this part to that part. That's like how long the wave is. What do you think that's called? Do you have a guess? Yes. It's called the length, the wavelength. That's it. Number one is wavelength. That's just how long the wave is. That's it. Number two is the bottom part of the wave. See how it's pointing to this bottom part, the lowest part? Um, and we call that the trough. Um, if you go to the farm, they feed pigs in the trough. That trough is like that low thing where they put in all the banana peels and donuts and whatever else they want to feed. Sorry, I'm reading Charlotte's Web with Ben at home, and so I know they're feeding him all kinds of just terrible stuff. Yes, it's a good book. So the bottom part is called your trough. What about the top part? The top part of your wave is going to be called the crest. And if you know the top, the best, does anybody know the best toothpaste? Crest is the best. It's the top. And they name that because the top part of the wave, the top toothpaste, is the crest. And then the last one, four, that's how tall your wave is. That's your amplitude. Um, my brother plays bass guitar, and he has an amp. And he plugs in his bass guitar to the amp. What do you think that does to his guitar? It makes it louder. It boosts the sound. So your amplitude is going to control your volume, how loud it is. So this really isn't that tall. It's not going to be a loud sound. But if my wave gets very, very tall, it's going to have a much louder sound. A hundred percent. Yeah. So the energy is going to transfer from one material to the next. So it can travel from a solid to a liquid to a gas. But that's our lab that we're going to do on Wednesday. So I'm not going to get ahead of myself. So we know that sound is a type of energy. We know that we can tell sounds apart. We know that sound um, is created through vibrations and that sound travels as a wave and there's different parts of the wave. Um, so we're going to take a quick three minute break just so that we can get set up, pass out the next set of materials, and then we'll do the second part of the lab where you'll walk around and test out your different objects.